Everyone loves to tell you to do your research before buying a tarantula, but they never tell you exactly how to do that research. Well, today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy videos about tarantulas and other invertebrates and exotic pets, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click that bell to turn on all notifications. That way you won't miss any new videos. Today I'm gonna to give you some tips on how to find reliable care and husbandry information and steps that you can take to make sure that you've done your due diligence and are prepared to take care of your new tarantula. Now I've broken this process down into 10 steps that we're gonna cover very quickly. Starting with number one, and that is is finding the scientific name for the tarantula that you want. A lot of times people that are new to the hobby are only aware of the common name of their tarantula or they're shopping online or at an expo and the common name is the only name that's labeled. But common names are not reliable and sometimes refer to multiple species. So the first step you can take to make sure you get the best care and husbandry advice is to find out the scientific name for the tarantula. Step two is to look up care sheets online. Now a lot of people will tell you that online care sheets are garbage, and they're not wrong. Sometimes they're pretty terrible. But I'm not suggesting that you use the care sheet as your sole form of information. I like to use care sheets and recommend care sheets to people because it gives you a general overview, a basic starting place. Sometimes that information is outdated or just wrong, but there are some really good resources out there where you can find some fairly reliable care sheets. For instance, my website, the tarantulacollective.com, has a lot of species specific care sheets. But there are other websites like Mike's Tarantulas, Tarantulapedia, and Therophosidae that I will link down below in the description. Again, this is just a starting point to get a general overview of the care that you're gonna need for your tarantula. Step three is to watch some care and husbandry videos on YouTube. It's one thing to read about how to take care of the tarantula, it's another thing to actually see it in action. I've got a lot of care and husbandry videos on my channel and there are a whole lot of other tarantula YouTubers out there that share their experience as well. The more videos you watch, the better because everyone has a different style and a different way of going about things. Also, they have different experiences because tarantulas have different personalities and people try out different enclosures, different setups, different sub substrates, the list goes on. So watch as many care videos about the tarantula that you're going to get as you can possibly find. Which brings us to the fourth tip, and that is utilizing as many sources as possible. Whether it's watching multiple videos on YouTube or reading multiple care sheets, it's important to have a wide base of knowledge. Think about a pyramid. The wider the base, the higher the point. So the wider your base of knowledge is, the higher your point of success will be. This also will help you identify moving forward which sources are good and reliable and which are outdated or just wrong. Tip number five is to read about people's experiences on different message boards or forums. There are a lot of tarantula Facebook groups out there as well as subreddits and forums all over the internet where you can find tens of thousands of people with decades of experience. If you don't do Facebook or you're not on Reddit, you can go to arachnoboards.com or tarantulaforum.com. Arachnoboard probably has the most depth information that's accumulated over the past decade or two with people sharing their experiences about keeping tarantulas. But but it is also notorious for being a haven for trolls. For the most part, it is an anonymous forum. No one rarely uses their real name. So sometimes people can be very condescending, rude, or even abusive if you post a question that they've seen answered a whole lot. So if you're sensitive or you're just new to keeping tarantulas, arachnoboards would probably be best utilized to search for your answers and not just post a beginner question that's been asked a hundred times. More likely than not, if you've got a question, you're not the first. So use the search function and try to 
find a post related to the topic that you want to ask about and just read all of the answers and replies and you'll avoid any of those trolls in the comments. Now before we get to the second part of the list, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity. From photography and illustration to graphic designs, creating videos for YouTube, and much more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I am currently taking a class by Marquez Brownlee called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, and it has taught me a lot about researching and writing scripts that will create value for the viewers and provide useful information so I can hopefully make the best videos I can. It is nice because they are ad-free and there are new classes launched every week, so there's always something new to learn. If you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or growing your existing channel, or maybe you just want to discover new ways to develop your creativity, I can help you out. The first 1,000 people to use the link on my description box or my code will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore and develop new skills and fall back in love with learning. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the list. Tip number six is to research the native location the tarantula is found and maybe even read some scientific papers on the species. Sometimes you gotta dive a little deeper in a Google search, but more likely than not, you will find some scientific papers that researchers have published about this tarantula. Sometimes it'll have the exact location, the type of environment, temperatures, rainfall, humidity, all kinds of useful information. Now, tip number seven is to take all of that information you've accumulated and begin to apply it to your specific situation. One of the reasons I like getting as much information as possible from as many different types of keepers is because no two situations are exactly alike. Some people will keep their tarantulas in the basement like me, others in their attic. Some people live up north where it's cool and humid, while others live in deserts that are hot and dry. So there will be some slight differences in exactly how they take care of their tarantulas. So you can pick and choose which aspects apply best to your situation and create a plan for how to take care of your tarantula the best possible way you can. Tip number eight is to monitor the conditions and make adjustments as needed moving forward. You may have a whole idea on how you're gonna take care of this species, but as time progresses and you observe the tarantula's behavior, you may find they favor one side of the enclosure over the other, or they're more active when the lights are on or when it's warmer in the room. So you can make adjustments to the layout of the enclosure or the conditions in the room to best suit your tarantula. Try different things you've seen in videos or heard from other people's experiences. Don't get stuck in your ways and Always be willing to learn and adapt. Which brings us to tip number nine, which is to continually speak to other keepers and learn from their experiences. Over time, best practices and husbandry will evolve as we learn more as a hobby. You don't wanna get left behind. So stay up to date, stay involved, stay plugged into these groups and message boards. Sometimes the scientific names for species will change and you'll need to update your records or labels. More information from researchers studying these tarantulas in the wild may provide clues to better keep them in captivity. Or over time, people's experience Experiences may lead to new revolutionary ideas or just slight adjustments to how we keep these spiders in captivity, which will give them a better quality of life. So stay up to date and keep your information relevant. And the last tip to researching tarantula care and husbandry is to track your feedings, molts, rehousings, and growth rate. If you followed these tips, then you learned a lot of what you know about your tarantula's care from the experience and information gathered by others. So moving forward, you should return that favor and be able to share your experiences and the conditions in which you keep your species with other people in the future. Some people use spreadsheets or notebooks, but there are also some really good apps out there that will make it very easy to keep track of your tarantula care. In fact, recently I made a video on Arachnophiles, which is a new app available on Android and iOS, which I will link right here if you want more information. Well, as always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. 
Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. Ha 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 ha